This actually I also got for, you know, about $100 on Facebook Marketplace. I came here like looking for like-minded community and ideas. The entryway is probably one of my favorite parts of the bus. You know, the kids are happy, so the parents are happy, you know. Hi, I'm Tiff. And I'm Eric. This is Ryder. And this is our bus, Slow Burn. So this is our kitchen. Um, it was really important for us to have like a func uh, fully functional um, full kitchen with an oven because I like to bake. And um, so we used a lot of reclaimed materials like all pallets for our paneling. Um, this uh, corner here was a coffee table that was sitting in our front yard for months and months and months before I finally like just like chopped it down and just fit it right there and it fit perfectly. Our oven is a uh, Magic Chef uh, propane um, four burner from a very old RV. It works pretty good, except the oven is just, when it's on, it's on full blast. So I kind of have to like um, tailor my cooking times and kind of get creative with like cookie sheets under so stuff doesn't burn, but we got it dialed in. Our sink, um, Tiffany wanted to really, um, you know, big sink, which comes in handy for bathing the baby. And this was also um, reclaimed out of an old house. Uh, there's a company in Phoenix that does demolition and they just have a warehouse full of old, you know, somebody else's junk, but our, our treasure. Fresh water is also, you know, kind of a, a task um, in the bus. So we have this Berkey water filter, these cabinets. I made out of um, saguaro cactus bones. Tiffany's uh, uncle owns a furniture shop and I went in there and saw these and I was like, teach me how to make those. So yeah, we really like kind of the Southwestern vibe. So right here we got silverware and general kitchen, you know, tools and such. And uh, down here is kind of our Tupperware bowl food processor. And then garbage here in general, you know, under the sink, like you'd have in any household. And then here we have just kind of dog food, extra toilet paper, um, paper towels, Ziploc bags, parchment paper, all that good stuff. Um, under here is where I'm, all my electronics live. If I did the build differently, I would have uh, allowed more space for expansion as everything is in there and it's in there. And if a component goes bad, I have to replace it with the same component because it's kind of just puzzle pieced in there. So we have for solar, uh, about 1200 watts on the roof. And then we have four Battleborn, um, 100 amp hour batteries, um, a Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt inverter charger and a 40 amp DC to DC charger, which was all generously donated to us by Tiff's best friend, Caleb at One World Energy in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, our fridge is just a residential, um, I believe it's, seven cubic feet um just a 120 apartment you know fridge it's perfect size we had a smaller kind of retro -y looking one but it was just too small this actually i also got for you know about i don't know a hundred dollars on facebook marketplace um scratch and dent uh whatever um but it's you know plenty of food storage plenty of freezer space and uh we're very happy with it i built this pantry and my friend Steve at Graybird Woodworking's wood shop um, in Lake Havasu. And it it's a beast. It holds so much food. And this is actually, we organized it. So you can imagine uh, what it looks like, you know, when, when it's not. But uh, we have these latches here so it doesn't fly open as it has a couple times when we forgot to latch it uh, driving. But it, uh, you know, it's solid. Um, everyone struggles with how to keep their cabinets closed. Um, some people do like child locks or, you know, bungee cords or whatever. Uh, we decided to, um, I have a friend who's a leather worker and gave me this uh, leather um, strip. So I made these little leather snaps that keep everything secure and when, while we're driving. And they also add like a cool little accent. So a lot of builds we've seen, um, you know, uh, the, the jar storage and we're all about, you know, reusing trash, basically, you know, keeping stuff out of landfill. So we have all our, you know, dry goods and spices, some spices, um, in jars, this shelf, 
I built. Um, it was an entertainment center and it was kind of funny actually. Someone was giving it away for free and we carried it all gingerly down from their second floor apartment and then I got it to the curb and just kicked it over and just into a pile of lumber and then I took it home and I ripped it into ripped it into boards and then um, we really like this black pipe for um, you know dual function of holding the shelf up but also keeping stuff from flying off. We met here two years ago, yeah, pretty much in this exact at, spot. At Schoolie Palooza. And... He was in his van, his Volkswagen, came all the way across the country from Rhode Island to find me, Desert Girl, uh, here with this bus, but it actually wasn't on site. It was still in a garage without anything done to it. And I came here like looking for like-minded community and ideas, and I found Eric and we just became like the dream team and knew we wanted to do it together because that is so important to have someone that like envisions the same lifestyle and goals and things that you do. So um, that's why we're here. I, I chose it for myself originally just to, I was taking a lot of opportunities that were like taking me on long distance trips and like I wanted to go work on a farm for a couple months or go do an earthship build for a couple months. So I needed to be able to like sustain that a little bit better and not just be like sleeping in a tent or sleeping in a, you know, a dorm with a bunch of people. Like I wanted to be able to give as much as myself to my work. So in order to do that, I wanted to have my own like safe, sacred, clean, space to live wherever I was doing work. Um, so that's what the bus is for me. And now it is that for our family and we can travel together and seek out opportunities and find somewhere where we really want to be. Homestead. Like homestead land. and yeah, just grow our, grow our life from here. It's kind of like a stepping stone and a literally a vehicle to get us to the next place so yeah. uh, the entryway is probably one of my favorite parts of the bus it's super beautiful Eric did awesome job on the tile work and all the details in the the hooks and all the fun little things and it's not only beautiful, but it's super functional and necessary in this space um, to have a place for all your little knickknacks. And uh, it's kind of a catch all with the shoes and um, keeping the dirt and all the mess kind of on this side of the baby gate is really nice too. Yeah, and then we enter into this side and we have probably my second favorite part of the bus, which is the play space here with all riders toys kind of on a Montessori style shelf that again, Eric built cause he did everything by hand um, from reclaimed materials for the most part. But we have ah. tons of storage above like throughout the bus on these top shelves. Ah. And I keep all his extra books and toys up here and then a few things down on the shelf at a time, kind of Montessori style, try to filter it through with whatever's appropriate for his development and just keep it fresh but not cluttered by having some stuff down and some stuff stored. So we put the car seat here when we drive. Eric installed a seatbelt with some grade eight uh, metal bolts and into the frame. So it's pretty solid in there. And I sit there next to him and that's how we cruise rear facing for now and then when he's older we can install a seatbelt on this side and he can turn facing the front so that's what we plan to do so super comfy as a couch we just used a cushion and upholstered it i couldn't think of that word um the butcher block that we used in the kitchen was a big eight foot slab that was one thing that we bought new and kind of splurged on it's walnut and really nice but the cutout from the sink and from the stove made two tables we have the table here that pops up in the middle for our kitchen table 
and then the table over here on the side for Ryder's play area, um, which is fun to have a low table for him to sit at. And when he doesn't just eat crayons, maybe we'll like color there and hang out. So under the kitchen dinette seats, we house the diesel heater, which you'll see the vent down here for that. Now we're in the bedroom. Uh, it was really important to me to like differentiate the spaces and I really didn't want just like a single hallway aisleway straight down to the back. And I also wanted to use and be able to access both back doors. We have a side door and a back door. Um, the back door kind of functions as our garage door because there's storage under the bed. And then the side door is just fun to like be able to swing it open. And eventually we're going to maybe build like some stairs that go down or a little deck and then kind of just more access points in the bus. This wall, it functions as a lot of things. It's a headboard for the bed. It's a bookshelf for storage. And then it's like a few inches in depth. And in there on the shower side is where the um, hot water heater is stored. Um, and on this side, we have a little extra space for some hanging clothes. So it's nice to have like a little wardrobe. Uh, it's fun traveling with a young one. I've always been a traveler myself since I was a young one. Um, I think the only way to travel with him as often as we do and as much as we want to is to like also be traveling with your house. So we can have so many cool experiences way more than we would be able to than if we were at at our home base, which is in Arizona. We experienced life like that with him for a few months and now we've been in the bus for a few months too. And I think we're all exponentially happier <clears throat> in the bus actually, because um, I don't know, there's not just like extra stuff to worry about or deal with. We're all in close proximity, which he, Ryder loves because he doesn't want me to be far away from him. So when I'm doing the dishes, like he's right here. When I'm going to the bathroom, he's right here. When I'm in bed, like we're, we're never far away from each other, um, which is a good thing and a, a challenging thing too at, at some points, but not really. Uh, yeah, it's just, um, like she said, it's we're all together all the time and you know, he's happy, the dog's happy, pumpkin. And, uh, you know, the kids are happy, so the parents are happy, you know, and... And it goes the other way, too. The parents are happy, so the kids are yeah. happy. Like, we're out here living our best life, and... Yeah, and we just think it's, you know, important to, like, share experience and, um, you know, find... Kind of, like, pick, go find your family. And it takes a village to raise a child and all that, yada, yada, yada. But it's, it's so true, and, you know, just being here and seeing all the other babies and kids running around and community and potlucks and it's just i don't know i feel like we're kind of tribal animals so it's kind of how we're how we're meant to live yeah. in the first place and you know just kind of when i stay put for so long i just kind of get like antsy. antsy and you know we can go someplace and if we don't like it we can go some other place So it was important for us to have a uh, full shower and we use it uh, with varying frequency depending on where we are and our access to water. So if we're somewhere like at a campground where, you know, we're plugged in or have access to a tap, we'll shower, you know, daily. When we're out here, you know, not so much. I had never really messed with tile before and I psyched myself out for about six months um, trying to figure out how to do it and did research and uh you know some people say oh you have to use this special grout and this special uh mortar uh, i just ended up tiling it like a residential you know shower and it's been it was my first tile job i was gonna outsource it but i watched a bunch of youtube videos and figured you know i got this so uh, we carry 60 gallons of fresh water and about 42 gallons of gray water. So it'll last us about a week if we're kind of conserving. A little further down the hallway, we have our toilet, which I built rather than, uh, you know, spend a lot of money on one of the name brand composters. Um, we didn't, real estate underneath the bus is actually kind of at a premium 
so we didn't have space for a black a black tank so rather than like the standard box that a lot of people have that i feel like would limit our kind of sh small hallway that we have uh i went out and got some vendor board and made a frame out of probably pallet wood and uh just bent it around and we have a separate urine diverter separate brand um which drains to a tank underneath the bus which we can drain so we don't have to walk you know through the bus to empty the tank it's uh it's easy and then we just have a bucket with wood chips and uh it's been pretty great so for a little bit of privacy we added this um stained glass kind of window sticker and uh it, when the sun hits it it makes a little really cool like rainbow effect um in the bus and these curtain rods I made, I sewed the curtains and the rods are just uh, half inch electrical conduit that we spray painted copper with just some plastic curtain stick on, stick on hangers from Amazon. Uh, my control panel here has my um, lights. Uh, I can turn my water pump off, my vent fan for my electronics on hotter days. And then I have my diesel heater controller here and my Renogy battery monitor here so we can see you know, where we're at as far as power and the sun. My piece of advice, if you're watching this and you're anything like me, like perfection or like idealism might hold you back. And I have had to do a lot of letting go, not only in this like, build process but like in being a mom as well like it's not going to be perfect but you can work really hard and it can be like pretty pretty close and you can be really really happy so it's like if you don't let your perfectionism get in the way then you can accomplish so much and um and have something really beautiful because it's never going to be perfect but it's it can it can be pretty close mm -hmm. And if you're like nervous about, you know, taking a step in anything, like if you don't, if you're not happy where you are and you keep telling yourself that like, oh, I need to do this, I'm comfortable, um, you know, like just go somewhere else. And that's kind of the theme of, you know, if we're unhappy with the weather, we can go to better weather, but it's like bigger than that. It's, you know, if you're not where you need to be, go find where you need to be. I think being here at an event like this too and like seeking out um, events where people are all showing up and doing the same type of thing together is really reassuring um, because we're all so few and far between like the people who are like us who want to live like this is kind of like on the outskirts or out on the edge but um, but you're not the only one and when you're in your community and everyone else is telling you you're crazy for wanting to do this mm. or whatever like just remember that like there's literally hundreds of buses out here right now with all kinds of families doing this like i'm the only mom that i knew that was doing this until a few days ago and now i know like hundreds so so yeah it and the nomad community is actually a pretty tight-knit community because everyone kind of travels and follows the weather and the saying is like you know, see you on down the road because you really do keep running into each other and people and um, yeah, and it can be really comforting and and it, yeah, allow you to meet people of like mind and heart and that and there's all kinds of people from all walks of life and all different budgets with all different kinds of jobs. Like everyone's doing this their way and you have your way and if this is what you want to do, like it's definitely possible. We're like a really small family that's spread out across the entire country. Well, thank you for uh, visiting our home. And um, if you'd like to follow our journey, uh, we're on at White Lightning VW on Instagram and also Slow Burn Bus, which we're going to be better about that posting. Which we don't really yeah, just connect with us. We love that. So. Yeah, or just come find us. We'll see you on down the road. <laughs>